What is up guys, it's Yuval here and in this video I have the perfect color grading crash course for you in Premiere Pro in Lumetri Color. If you're just starting out, this is going to be absolutely perfect for you. We're gonna cover everything A to Z, so you wanna make sure you watch the entire thing. But before we jump in, make sure you like this video and subscribe for more of these videos. And we also have a giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But now let's jump right in. So we're in Premiere Pro and let's get this tutorial going. Um, so I'm in the color tab here in Premiere and the first thing I wanna do, the very first thing um, that you need to do when you start color grading is transforming your footage from log format into Rec 709. And if you don't know what that means, let me briefly explain. So essentially log is a profile picture that lets you capture higher dynamic range images. Um, most of the cameras these days um, shoot log and most people shoot log. A log image is usually more flat, it's more gray, it has less colors um, and just the contrast is very low as you can see in this example over here. And every camera brand has different uh, log types even in the same camera. Um, you sometimes have a few log options. So Blackmagic log is going to look different than Sony then Panasonic, uh, then RED, uh, and so on. But we're gonna get into that in a second. Um, so we want to take that log footage and convert it into Rec. 709. Rec. 709 is the standard color space. Uh, most of the stuff you're seeing online is Rec. 709. And for now, we could just relate to Rec. 709 as just um, the normal base, I guess, like the normal colors, normal contrast, uh, what you would expect to see. Now, a lot of people shoot on log and then they just try to mess with the contrast and like add some saturation and do the conversion to X709 in that way. And while that can sometimes work, it's probably not the best way to go about it. What you actually wanna do is get the conversion LUT from the official brand that you're using. So if I'm using Blackmagic, um, you can get official Blackmagic um, log to Rec. 709 LUTs. And the same goes for Sony or whichever camera uh, you're shooting with. Usually they're available for free uh, from the brand's website. So make sure you get the official ones. So in my case, now I'm working with a Blackmagic Pocket uh, file. It was shot on the Pocket 6K and was shot on Blackmagic Film, which is the log profile for Blackmagic. So I'm going to in my basic corrections, uh, first thing I'm going to do is choose the correct LUT. And right away, you can see we're back into normal colors and contrasts. Um, if we do a quick before, um, you can see this is pretty flat. And now we have the contrast back, the colors back. Um, here we could probably see it a little bit better. And some log profiles are more flat, some are less flat. Um, really depends on your camera's brand, but the process is going to be similar. So now that we're in the right color space, uh, what we want to do is correct any white balance issues that we might have. Um, so that's why we have the temperature and thin sliders over here. This, I just wanna warm up a little bit, maybe. Somewhere around there um, looks fine to me. Sometimes you might not even need to do this if you got the white balance right um, on the shoot, which is what you probably want to do anyways. Uh, but in case you didn't, then you have these sliders over here to help you fix that. Then we have the exposure slider, which is just the overall exposure of the image. Then we have contrast, which controls the contrast. Um, usually I don't uh, push this around too much. Then we have highlights, which can be very effective. Look at the sky. It's quite blown out just the way it is. But if I turn the highlights back down, suddenly we're getting some details in the sky. We're getting that blue color back. We're getting some details uh, in the clouds and also on the face. So that's looking pretty good. And all we're doing now, like this whole section, is just color correction. So we're not doing any creative uh, color work, which would be called color grading. So uh, at this stage, we're just focusing on fixing the image, fixing any color uh, issues, fixing the exposure um, and all of that. Then we have shadows. If you wanna uh, open the shadows up or close them down a little bit. And we also have whites and blacks, 
which I'm not gonna mess with too much. Just the blacks, maybe a little bit. So let's have a quick look again. Um, this is the image we started with. It's the log image. We converted it to Rec 709, did a few basic adjustments, and now we're in a good place to start color grading if we want to. So really the whole point of these basic corrections, the color correction, is just to get us to a base point where we could walk off if we wanted to um, create more creative looks. And a lot of the times you could just stop here. It really depends on the kind of project that you're doing um, and the kind of look you're looking for. So right here in the creative section, this is where we're going to get creative as the name suggests. Um, here we can apply LUTs that actually give us some kind of a look to the image. Um, so I have some LUTs that I got from Motion Array. Um, I'll leave a link down below, but let's check them out. I'm going to do, um, let's go for like 14. And immediately you can see we're getting a pretty crazy look over here. Um, we can control the intensity with the slider over here. So if I wanted it more subtle maybe, then I would do something like that, let's say. Um, so that's a very powerful way to instantly add a look to your footage, um, save time, or maybe if you just can't get the look right, then LUTs can be very helpful in that. Now, most of these creative LUTs are made to use on Rec. 709, which means it doesn't matter which camera you're shooting on because you need to get the basic correction that we did uh, basically getting your footage from log into Rec. 709 and then you apply the LUT. So essentially any camera should be at the same starting point before applying the LUT. So this is what a lot of people miss. They tend to go right into the LUT, they try to apply it and it doesn't look right because they haven't um, made the first step of getting their footage into that base start. So you definitely want to avoid that mistake and just do everything correctly and you're going to get beautiful images. Now on here you also have faded film, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, yeah, you can see what it's doing. Um, I don't really like it. It looks a little bit amateurish, but if that's your thing, then by all means go for it. Um, then we also have sharpen, if we need to sharpen the image. Um, we don't need to in this case. Um, we also have vibrance. And then also, of course, saturation. And then also if we wanted to, this is where we could add some color tint to the highlights or the shadows. So a common one would be obviously yellow highlights, like warm highlights. And then cool shadows. So the creative tab is a great way to immediately get an effect um, on the image if you're short on time or if you just want to get a beautiful look easily. Um, so this is our Rec. 709 and uh, wow, that's quite a big difference. This is with the creative tab on and that's without it. Um, so you can see how much we've like, pushed the image and it was really fast. So uh, yeah, that's the creative tab and let's um, cancel that for now and get back into the starting point. And I'm gonna show you guys the other sections that we have. So curves, um, this is a really, really important um, and powerful section. Of course, we have just the normal um, curve that you guys probably know by now. So we could control individual channels or all of the channels together and basically manipulate the shadows and highlights, which is really powerful in and of itself. But what I really like more is these uh, other curves over here and uh, we're going to get into them. I'm going to show you guys. So all of these things over here are basically tools to control individual colors, uh, which is why they're so powerful, because they give you that pinpoint accuracy where you can change specifically uh, the use, saturation and luminance of a certain color. So you can see we have U versus Sat, which means we can choose a color and affect its saturation. Um, then U versus U, which means we just change the color. Then we have U versus Luma, which means we change the luminosity or basically the brightness of a certain color. And then we could also make a selection based on luminosity and change the saturation. Or we could choose a color based on saturation 
and control the saturation. So let's say I don't really like the green color over here. Um, I want to make it more yellow. Um, what I could do is take the color picker here and I'm going to go for U versus U. And let's choose this green color. And then you can see it makes a point for me um, where this color is on this graph. So all I need to do is move it around and you can see we're getting more yellow. Or we could go the other way and make it more blue. So that is really cool. And of course we can do the same thing if we wanted to control saturation um, or luminosity. So let's go for luminosity for a second. Uh, U versus Luma. Um, let's say I want to get this sky uh, more deep. It's a bit too bright for me. I want to get more depth in there. I'm going to choose the color over here, which is of course blue. And then I'm going to pull this down and you can see what's happening to the sky. And if I go really extreme, you can see that our image is really starting to fall apart. You can see all of these weird artifacts. Um, so that's something to be uh, aware of and be careful of when manipulating uh, specific colors because that can happen pretty quickly uh, depending on what, uh, like depending on the quality of the footage that you have. Um, so that's obviously too much. So we're going to back it up. So that was curves. And next up, we have the color wheels. With the color wheels, we can basically push color into the shadows, into the midtones, and into the highlights. Be gentle with this tool because it can get uh, pretty crazy pretty fast. Um, so let's make a quick demonstration. Um, so I think like before, we're gonna push the highlights towards these warm tones. And then we'll push some blues into the shadows. And maybe get mid-tones towards those warm colors also. So obviously I'm just playing around, but just see how much of a difference that made um, very quickly. So that is how to use the color wheels. Um, take the time to experiment with it and see which color combinations work. Um, obviously it really depends on your footage as well, uh, but it's a very powerful tool to create uh, strong looks. So next up we have HSL Secondary which is an amazing feature that Premiere uh, didn't always have, I think a few years back, um, they didn't have it on here. And it's a very, very important because it lets you make selections based on U, saturation and luminance um, all together, which gives you a lot of control and is great, especially for controlling uh, things like skin tones or maybe like other specific parts of an image. So let's make a quick example. Um, let's say we wanted to separate his skin and control only that. Um, we could go into the eye dropper and choose a point somewhere around there. Um, and then to actually see what we're selecting, um, we can check this box over there. And I usually like to go for uh, white and black. And then we're going to start manipulating things. So I'm just messing around with U, saturation and luminance um, to try and make the best selection that I can. And this is going to be easier or harder depending on the footage you're working with. Um, so in this case, it's not the easiest. So I'm just gonna try my best. Um, but if you are doing it for yourself, then obviously take the time uh, to mess around with it and find the perfect selection. So you can see my selection here is not the cleanest. We're getting some of his clothes and um, some stuff in the background. Uh, so definitely spend more time on this. Again, I'm just doing it for the sake of the tutorial, just showing you guys the principles. Um, but yeah, let's, let's say that this is a good selection and we're happy with it. Uh, so we can denoise and that could clean up things a little bit more. Maybe add some blur even. Then let's uncheck this so we can get back into the normal view. Um, so now we could either move around colors over here or we could move them in shallow midtones highlights. And we could also control the temperature, tint, contrast, sharpen, and saturation. 
Um, so let's say the skin um, is maybe like too saturated for me. I could bring it down just like that. Super easy once we have the selection. Um, you can see this is working pretty well, even though my selection wasn't the best. So we could also move around the colors over there. So basically you can see we're controlling only the selected area, which is the face. So if I zoom in here, just so you guys can see better, this is before and this is after. Um, let's even make something more extreme so you can see a little better. Okay. So before and after, you can see we're really only affecting the selected area. We're not affecting the sky or any of the background. Um, so this is really a great, great tool to make very specific adjustments. So now for the last section, we have vignette, which if you guys don't know, um, you're going to quickly understand. If I push this to the left, you can see we're getting these darker edges um, around the frame and that just kind of helps focus our attention on the center of the frame. Um, I don't, like I never use this thing, which is um, like brightening the, the corners. So just adding a little bit of a vignette is um, usually a good idea. And you could also control the softness uh, with the feather over here. Um, just make it more subtle, less noticeable. And then you have even more control over the midpoint um, and the roundness, basically giving you control of the actual shape. So vignette is pretty simple, um, self-explanatory. Um, you don't always need it. I don't always use it, but sometimes it's nice. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. Um, that would be highly appreciated. And also make sure you follow us on Instagram and join our exclusive Facebook community. Links down in the description below. And for today's giveaway, one of you guys could win a free one-year artist music and sound effects subscription. All you have to do is let us know down in the comments below what video would you like for us to make next. Here are the three lucky winners from our last video. Congratulations to you guys. Wear those amazing t-shirts. And until the next time, stay creative.